Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Today it's really an opportunity to have some fun with a very old reel. This one is a Julius von Hoff. Uh, it was patented in, uh, well, there's two dates there. The second one I can make out, it's October 8th, 1889. Very uh, early fishing reel. And uh, Nick, I'm sorry, Neil, found this one as part of an estate sale, I believe. And uh, well, we're gonna show you how it was made. Um, Hoff was one of the first of the American uh, fishing reel pioneers back in the day. They made some beautiful reels. And this one is an early direct drive fishing reel. We're going to take it apart and see how it's made, show you how to service it, and uh, kind of explore the, uh, the reel itself. I haven't had one of these apart, so uh, we'll see what we can do. The first thing I did was I removed the handle nut cap which holds the handle on and this is a good place to, to tell you if you haven't worked on a reel before take pictures because as you open this up you may uh, be in for some surprises when it comes time to reassemble if you haven't taken those pictures to me this one's going to be a very straightforward reel it, it should have a big gear drives a little gear to turns the spool not much more you saw that I did spray this down with some penetrating oil. I don't know the last time that the reel has been serviced. And I want to make sure, particularly on an old reel like this, that uh, I take some precautions as I go to remove the screws. Because, well, you break one of these and, uh, well, you're not going to find much after that. There are five side plate screws. When I take these out, I want to notice the screws themselves and the position, and if there's a difference in the sizes of them. Interestingly enough, these look like stainless screws. This um, Hoff was way ahead of his time. Generally, he's, he is credited with being the creator of the star uh, drag system. They, they worked, uh, I forget exactly where he worked. I want to say Ohio, but I'm probably wrong. And uh, in his work, he often consulted with and worked uh, with uh, Ocean City. And eventually, in the 1930s, I believe it was, Ocean City uh, merged the companies. They bought out the Von Hoff, even though they left Von Hoff as a, a separate line. It was part of the Ocean City Reel Manufacturing Group at that time. So a lot of history in the reel. It's uh, one of those American reel makers, and uh, well, a lot of fun. All right, so I'm going to keep those three long ones off to the side. I put all my pieces and parts into a parts tray. This seems to be a little bit thicker, a little bit different color, and I could just be crossing my eyes here. It may all be the same, but I'm going to take the two that are on the bottom and I'm going to separate those so that when I go to reinstall, I'll have it reinstalled properly. Well, I'm hard, I'm hard to say or see on this one as to whether this corner here has been clipped. If it's clipped, then uh, that would reduce the value of the reel as a collectible. It is clipped. I notice that there's a more of a rounded and taper on this side of the reel seat as opposed to this one. Somebody probably cut it down to uh, fit it in a, a rod seat. Uh, it's kind of a shame, but it's not gonna hurt our lessons learned here, I guess, Back in the day, who, who would have thought they would have been collectible? Very simple internal design. We have a cast control cap. We have a bridge that's held on by two screws. We have the main gear. And then on this side, we have a gear that's the spool gear or pinion gear. And on the back end, well, just a lot of dryness. And we were hearing uh, the noise it was making. And that's because, well, what do they say? The squeaky reel gets the oil or something like that, right? So we're just going to clean this up. I'm going to just use a light steel wool here to run that around. I don't want to use anything that's going to be abrasive or, or ruin the patina or anything like that. But that, that steel wool is 4-0 steel wool. It's pretty much like a kitchen scrubby. It's not going to, to ruin anything short of just kind of buffing that to the point where you can uh, get the old greases off. We're going to leave the line on. 
And we're going to do that because, well, it's part of the reel's history. And if Neil wants to uh, do something with this, take it off or whatever, show it, whatever, that, that's going to be on him. I am going to take a rubber band and I will uh, hold this down just so it doesn't get in the way when I go to reinstall. It's also a way to tell people that I've had the spool off because you know, unless you're a magician and know a different way, that's the only way to, to get the rubber band on is with the spool off the reel. Now you can see a little bit better the clipping that has gone on on that side there. It's flat on that side, kind of rounded like a toenail on this side. So it's a little bit of a shame, but that's the way it goes. Nice sharp point on your bait alarm. And it uh, doesn't look like this one's been used much. I can't see it being used at all there, but okay. Um, do the same thing here. Now there's, a, there's always a question between what do you want to polish and clean and patina and things like that. And cleaning up the, um, the old dirt, that's something you would expect to be done on a reel. I guess I've seen folks do some unusual things, repaint and the like, you don't want to do that. And even here, I'm going to just try and get what I can off with that penetrating oil. One of the things that was nice about these reels was that the reel itself was pretty easy to service. That would keep you going for a long time. Imagine you're back in the late 1800s, right? This has got a patent of 1889. Let's say it's a turn of the century reel. You're not going to have a lot of tools. You're not going to have the modern shop and all these other things to rely on. You're basically going to have a screwdriver and uh, the like. And, well, you want the, the design took that into consideration so that you could service it yourself. Two bridge screws now, and we'll bring out the, the main gear. I'm going to lay them on my desk as well. I'll make sure that they're the same. Logic would tell you that they're the same. Logic doesn't always win. There you are, the same, and now that main gear should be able to come out. We want to finish cleaning the inside. I'm going to use a penetrating oil just to kind of clean the cavity. A lot of times on these old reels you're going to find drip dried greases and dirt. That's not the case here, but uh, it's not unusual to find that. And when you find that, you want to make certain that you clean it up before you go to reinstall pieces and parts. There is a brass insert in this plastic or Bakelite uh, plate. That's acting as a bushing. I guess that probably comes all the way through with this. And I imagine, not I imagine, I know, if you take these through screws out, you can remove the uh, metal plate with the ID. There's no reason to do that here. This simply slides off the shaft. We saw that the nut cap is going to hold it good. Make sure that this shaft is clean and nice and smooth. And you get a little bit of grease underneath that. Inspect the teeth on the main gear. This is uh, it's a one-piece unit. So just make sure they're all clean. I guess you would normally say, well, if they're scarred, I uh, replace the gear. Well, you're not going to find the pieces and parts. So just know that if you got a rough bump bump, it would be because of the main gear in this situation. Put that back together. Bring your pieces and parts together, flip them, align your holes so that you can put those screws back in, and put the screws in. But while I'm doing that, if you have any questions on this reel or any reel in particular, maybe you're working on one and you're stuck, if you want to leave those questions in the comments section, I will try to, uh, to assist you in getting you back on track. And recently I've been doing a couple of what I call wheel in the bag projects where people have gotten off track. And I think some of the solutions, well, if they had left the question in the block, maybe they could have continued to have done the reel themselves. In some cases it's interesting, I was just kind of in a little chat saying, you know, a lot of times I get these reels in the bag projects where they've sat in a bag for quite some time, maybe decades. Because perhaps, I mean some of the stories that come back. 
their uh, their parent, uh, uh, brother, sister, cousin, mom, whoever, opened up the reel because it wasn't working the right way. Took it apart and couldn't figure out how to put it back together again. Put it in a desk drawer, workbench drawer, uh, kitchen drawer, whatever you uh, want to add to the story there. And it's been sitting there for way too long. All right, I've just greased the one side of the uh, pinion gear. This does not have a free spool release. This is a direct drive reel. So the direction that you turn your handle is uh, the way that the reel is going to, to uh, go. All right, we could put a little bit of grease into that cast control cap over there. Got a little bit on the spool here to keep it that way. Merge the two pieces and then align your holes. The two that are closest to each other go in the real stand below. And I've segregated those screws even though perhaps they are the same. There's one that has the washer on here that didn't come off with the screw, so we're going to put that one back where the washer is. The other two of the washers came out. So let's get that back in. It doesn't seem to be starting quite yet. So we'll do our best to do that. Hmm. Well, let's use another one to align. I use a pick all the time to align the the holes. That first one is always a little difficult to get in. And it generally settles up a little bit. There you go, this one's going. We'll come back to the others. Don't force anything, particularly on an old reel like this. If you force something that breaks, well, I guess shame on you, right? Uh, I have this one aligned on this side, so I'm going to put that right in there now that I know those line up. And we'll come over and put a real, real stand screw in. Again, they may very well be the same screw, but it uh, doesn't hurt to mark the locations, keep them in your parts tray separate, and that way you know where they go when it's time to finish. I always have an issue sometimes with the, uh, the Penn International Round Bait Casters, the 930s, 940s. I, I think it's my mind that plays tricks on me, but I always think that of the four screws that go on the inside gear side plate, the two go in a different spot than the others, and I'm pretty sure that they're all the same screw. But uh, I just make a habit when I do that one of ensuring that they're all marked in my parts tray, at least mentally marked in my parts tray, so that I know where they are. Well, if nothing else, I would expect this reel to turn free and easy. And I don't think I'm going to hear that, uh, that chirping or the gear noise that we heard early on. So again, thanks to Neil for sending this one in. I always wanted to say I've worked on a Von Hoff reel, and now I can. One more. Let's see if this one lines up now. Hopefully it does. Yep, it's going in now. And then we really only have a handle and a cap nut. I might be able to give this a little bit of a test in terms of how we did. Now here's one, I think probably you could try and work that little grease off of there, but I'm not going to, to scrub that down with, with anything. Again, there's a patina on here. I don't want to ruin that patina. Same thing here, I'm not going to brush the, uh, the German silvering on that. It may have been done, or that may just be a wear pattern. It's probably a wear pattern. Uh, that's pretty neat. So, let me just turn this up. And I wonder how many generations of hands have hit this side when you screw, when you're reeling the reel. You know, are you brushing up against that? I wonder. All right, let's see if we've quieted it down. <laughs> Look at that, huh? Nice and quiet. And did you want to reel this one lefty? Go right ahead. Here's your left hand crank. It's a what's called a knuckle buster reel. It will turn in both directions. When you cast or you use a line uh, weight for dropping, the handle will spin backwards. And the knuckle buster idea, if you're casting and you go to throw this reel, well, if you aren't careful about how you're holding the reel, it's going to hit you in the hand. Same thing with fighting a fish. You, uh, you probably would have used a leather key fob on this 
the whole tension on it since there is no drag it's a direct drive reel and uh, same thing if you're kind of holding like that and the fish is fighting you back the running line could be the way that your hand is positioned you're going to get whacked that's it there you go the julius vom hoff patented in october of 1889 what a nice reel it's uh, got a well-deserved reputation well i hope you've enjoyed that neil thanks for sending it in uh, to our first responders and essential personnel, thank you for all it is that you do to keep us safe. Your efforts truly are appreciated. To everybody, good luck out on the water. Stay fishing, stay well, and take a friend fishing with you while you're at it. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Have a great day.